Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. This 2014 indie vampire thriller romance has Alexander Draymond in it. It's the only reason I watch this because I want to see what else he's done and if it's any good. And if he's any good in something different than The Last Kingdom, which I love. It's a great show. He's really good in it. So thus we check out Blood Ransom. Give me the keys. What the fuck? You stay out of it, I'll fuck your bar up. Don't help us. This movie starts out telling us that two months ago, Jeremiah is applying for a job and he's warned not to get close to Crystal at this bar slash lounge he's gonna work at. And then we jump to present day where his buddy Oliver's like, you should kidnap Crystal so that we can ransom her to the boss. He'll pay money. And then we jump to this bar slash lounge thing at night and they don't fool around. Crystal refused to drink because she's still human and they're trying to get her to feed on Jeremiah who they've conveniently set up as her driver so that, you know, she'll drink him and then turn to the dark side of vampirism, I guess. His friends keep pushing him to kidnap her and then we see her doing some heroin-esque drug but probably more vampire related. And then Oliver and his buddy break in and kidnap her but it doesn't go as smooth as you would think. But then, crowbar. Oh, shit! Hey, no, Roman the head honcho vampire dude knows that she's been kidnapped so he tells his henchman Bill to go get her and kill everyone. Ollie leaves Jer a message confessing to the crime and Jer knows where she's being held so he goes there, finds she's all chained up so then he has to go to the Bunker Hill bar and politely ask Ollie for the key. Keys. Don't be fucking stupid. Give me the fucking keys! Minutes later, Bill shows up and he shoots the bartender and always throwing Jeremiah under the bus saying it was his idea. What a good friend. It doesn't save him. Well, you're wrong. Jer rescues her, but she doesn't want to go to the hospital and they don't want to go back to the club and Bill's closing in and suddenly his car is having trouble starting, but they do escape. Detective Daniel, who's Jer's friend, arrives at the crime scene and he says that he doesn't recognize any of these people, but he's lying. He knows all of them. And then he tells one of the coroner's people that like to hide the fact that Jer's fingerprints are all over everything for like at least 24 hours to help him figure out what's going on. And he runs into Jer after Jer goes to this auto body part shop and leaves Crystal with his friend as he had to get a new car. And he tells Jer like, oh, like this guy's dead, Ollie's dead. Like you're being hunted, man. And so Jer calls his buddy and says, get out. Then Jeremiah shows up at the auto body part and he confronts Bill with a gun. And I'll give Bill this, he does have a good line here. Your best chance is to bring her back. If you do that, I'll give you 50-50. If you don't, what happens is 100%. During the drive to Arnie's cabin, Crystal vomits blood, so Arnie pulls over and then he gets out and then she shows how like fangy she is and he steps out into the road and gets hit and she licks the blood off the cement. Then she gets in and, you know, drives and then she gets out of the car, lights it on fire and walks on. Then we see Roman biting a pale redhead in front of Bill. Bill's kind of upset about it, but he's trying not to show it. And Crystal somehow still finds the cabin. <laughs> Jared gets to the cabin and finds Crystal healed. And then they make PG-13 love, which is fine. You know, I've been getting spoiled a lot with my uh, R-rated reviews lately. And then Roman somehow shows up and talks to her outside. She doesn't want their life Roman offered her and he says if he stays with this dude that she's gonna drink him. And then she goes inside and she's holding a knife, staring at him sleeping, but she doesn't kill him, she decides not to. Then her face starts to change in the morning and she's all like, oh, I need to cut and drink your blood so I can be normal. And because he's into her, he lets her. But then she's like, you should probably kill me. Then we jump back to Daniel's side story with him and his wife at the doctor's office being told that if they have a baby, it's gonna be born sick because they have two different types of blood. And then the other detective is talking to Daniel that he's the connection to all these people. Bill talks to this other vampire guy who like works at a bank and he's all like, yeah, Roman shouldn't be leading your chapter because you can't even handle this one girl. And then Jer and Crystal decide to go see a fortune teller who tells them how she can be changed back. The fortune teller lady's a vampire too. And I guess she kidnapped this girl earlier and decided to turn her into a vampire so that she could have a daughter or something. It's gonna come into the story later and it's not really relevant. 
And then she says, you know, if you kill her, that the girl will turn back to normal. And because it hasn't been a full week, you have one week to kill them. They're setting all these new vampire rules up. Whatever, guys. Whatever. You have to kill Roman. And if you do, if, mix a drop of his blood in this vial of newly blessed holy water. Drink it. And you'll be human again, Crystal. Dan finds the cabin and the knife, and then Jer finds his holy father who's gonna bless the water so that when Crystal drinks it at a certain point, then it's gonna help flush the system. He just has to kill Roman, and then she'll go back to normal. But then Bill shows up and they have a gunfight. He's father there sometimes. Jer gets hit, Bill gets shot, and drives off. And both Jaren and Crystal are hurting and Roman shows up and he's just like, drink him and I'll save his life. And then we jump to the bank vampire dude who's actually like helping Bill back to life. And he gives him a dagger that's apparently, you know, designed for Roman. Later Jer finds Crystal and he's feeling good and so is she. So they make love again. And then we see Hobbs and Daniel and they're getting along good. All of a sudden you want to be a cop now. Mm. That's funny. You know what? Fuck you, man. Dan grabs his father's old gun and has a dramatic talk with his wife. Seriously, just adopt you two. And Jer and Crystal get to the club. And Bill seems to be helping him. Even gives him the blade that's supposed to kill Roman. And the bank dude's there talking to Roman. And then Jer shows up and they fight. Bill shows up and there's blood everywhere. I mean, there's a way to kill somebody and then there's a way to paint a room. And that's what Jer did. He's still alive and he gets the water. He gets Crystal to drink it. And then Bill points a gun at him. But it doesn't work. So they fight. Then we cut to Crystal killing Bill and ripping out his insides. And then Dan shows up and he points a gun at Crystal and then Jer closes his eyes. Can you save him? Dan pulls out a knife and asks if she can save him. And then we jump to a kitchen table where he's sitting there with the blonde girl. I guess he's adopted her now and he retired from the force because he couldn't follow the rules. <sighs> the end. It's both. And then we see Crystal walking in the sun and the car pulls up and it's just like, where are you going? And she's like, somewhere. The end. Somewhere. And then we jump to Jeremiah, who suddenly just turns around in the sun. We can't even see if it's the same location. The end. Thank you. I get the budget constraints, but how about you tell a better story? I mean, I was pretty impressed with Alexander Draymond. I mean, he didn't have much to do in this. His character wasn't fleshed out whatsoever. He was just a cool guy. And then like, oh, I'm gonna get a job. What? He's friends with a cop, but then he does this illegal shit. Like, what is he, Nicolas Cage and Gone in 60 Seconds? Because that's the vibe I got, but I didn't get any explanation as to what his character was, why he had friends that were like, let's kidnap this girl and ransom. Are they having money problems? No clue, because this movie doesn't explain much. And then they're trying to introduce these vampires and give all this new information about them, try and change the lore, mix it up, because that's what you do when you want to be fresh. But like, they don't explain a lot of it, and it's kind of dumb. It's like, oh, this person has a knife made for them, so you have to kill them with that knife. What does that fucking matter? Unless it's made from them, and how do you, you can't make a knife from them unless it's a bone knife. And they weren't using bone knives, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. And also, I guess you could just drink blood during that week you were changing and it would heal you, but like you weren't a vampire yet because you had to wait the full week. And then like if you drank the holy water and then I guess killed the dude with the knife, which again doesn't make a lot of sense, then you wouldn't be a vampire anymore. That was the explanation. I thought Crystal was okay, but she was just this moody one-tone person the whole time. Didn't want to give any explanations because she was too cool for school. She was all like, oh yeah, I like him, but I'm sad. Like you chose this. You chose to be a vampire. Even if Roman did it against your will, which didn't seem like the case, you went along with it. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like. What the fuck? Why was this movie made? At least it was independent, so like, I know people were trying, trying to make a good movie here, but like, it just didn't work for me. It didn't, uh, did it work for anybody? Because I hadn't even heard of this. I had to go deep into Alexander Draymond's IMDb to find this. And it's like, which movie does he play the leading man? Well, this is the one. So, I don't know. 
I wouldn't watch it. I definitely wouldn't recommend you watch it. But I do think that he could be a pretty sweet actor going forward. I mean, his work in The Last Kingdom alone just tells you that. Um, Bill was cool. Um, not a lot for him to do, but he was cool. I thought the uh, actor that played him actually had some character. Um, did, didn't have, again, didn't have much to do, but at least he seemed like a reasonable henchman. Roman sucked. I didn't like Roman at all. I mean, he was playing a vampire from a different movie and everybody else was trying to play these new types of vampires and the banker dude, man, was he out of place? Yes, the answer to that is yes. It was rhetorical, but I'm gonna give you the answer anyways. Again, um, yeah, what the fuck? Thanks for watching. I need your blood. Please, please don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're not gonna take my blood. Just one ticket. You're in the middle of the road!